After listening to that special branch officer this morning, I have to say that I'm well, I'm not shocked. It is time that our people wakened up to what went on through these troubles. Martin McGuinness and them hadn't got a charmed life. They were protected. And we see a situation here with a member of the special branch who had information and were ready to move on a number of IRA men and their weapons to seize them. And somebody at the very top stopped them. Well, the question has to be asked, how many more people were murdered by them weapons that could have been seized that morning by this officer and the, the members, other members of the security forces? How many people died with them weapons that weren't seized? And this thing about people being dead, there's a number of people alive, and indeed some of them are in our government who can answer these questions. And Martin McGuinness is one of them. Let's be truthful here and let's start telling the facts. It's got now that you can't put facts out because you're rocking the boat. Well, I don't give two stuffs about rocking the boat. As far as I'm concerned, the people... We've had a family on this morning who had two loved ones shot from that area after what happened Chesney and them at a later date. Was the weapons that they were going to seize that morning at Father Chesney's, were they the weapons that killed them? Then people now need to know what was going on. And before the start of blaming the RUC, this was not the RUC. The genuine men within the RUC, the ordinary rank and file of the RUC, and indeed the ordinary rank and file of Special Branch, wanted to take these people down. Now, we heard that the Chief Constable couldn't even intervene at times with Special Branch. Let's be truthful. The government were running the head of Special Branch. Nobody else. Our politicians from Westminster were calling the shots about who lived and who died in this country. Now, the other thing about the weapons, he said they had to bring a large vehicle because there was that many. Well, here's just something that's not relevant at the minute, but it's something we'll explain later on. Was these the 500 weapons that were brought to Donegal by the Irish Army at the behest of the Irish government and handed over? Is that where they were hidden? Because nobody's ever raised the question about the 500 weapons that come out of the army barracks in Dublin. And that's not me saying that. We've got proof of that. Now, this special branch officer, to his credit, has come out and spoke up. And he has to be congratulated for that. Because the man was trying to do his job and his superiors stopped him. And he nearly paid for his own life. And they talk about truth commissions. No, it's not truth commissions we need. It's the people who were involved, the Martin McGuinnesses of this world, who led a charmed life, who was protecting them all down through the years. People in that area need to know now. How many of them weapons was used in killing people from that community when it could have been stopped by the special branch and by the army? Now that's the reality of the situation here. But this is only one incident that has come to light. I have been warned over this last few years not to stick my nose into certain issues. Well I will stick my nose into them issues. And there's more than me now is sticking their nose into them issues. Because good men and women were sacrificed within the security forces by the British government and also the Irish government. So people like Martin McGuinness could be protected. And indeed Jerry Adams could be protected. We now want to know the truth. I'm moving slightly away from the cloudy situation to look at the King's Mill situation. The night the King's Mill happened, there was no army on the ground. When they shot the men, they went round and shot them in the back of the head after that. We now have found out that the vehicle that was hijacked and used in that, there was two statements given naming the individual who hijacked the vehicle. Now, the HET has said that Kings Mill is one of the worst of the worst atrocities. Basically, it's a crime against humanity. 
It is something that you've seen done with the Jews during the Second World War. When the men were lying on the ground, some of them had 20 bullet holes in them. They went round and shot them in the back of the head. And then we were told that there's two statements identifying one of the men who later turns up with the Oma bomb. Let's start getting the truth out here to the Protestant community and indeed to the ordinary nationalist people as well. The IRA were allowed to run in certain areas. And the people to blame here is not our security forces. It is the people at the top. It is the government officials in Whitehall who were given the orders and also the dirty brigade within the Irish government. The IRA talk about a truth commission. Martin McGuinness is sitting in our government. A man who knows exactly what happened the day of the bloody bombing and knows exactly what Father Chesney was involved in. And here's something else. Father Chesney is the tip of the iceberg. We've been saying, and if people looked through our stuff, we've been saying for quite a while, there is a large number of priests within the Catholic Church who were involved in the IRA between storing weapons, training and actually carrying out uh, terrorist incidents themselves. Not one or two, but a very large number of them. They tried to deny the whole paedophile situation whenever it came to light. They finally had to own up to it. Well, we want to send a message now on behalf of the victims. We are getting to the bottom of what is going on or did go on in this country. And we are not sitting back and allowing our people to be discredited or their names abused and thrown through the gutter because it suits some political agenda. Our people died for what they believed was right and that was to uphold law and order, which 99% of the security forces did. It was the government that let our people down here. And no matter how many threats they throw at us, because if Willie Fraser is not here, it'll be somebody else who will come forward to do it. And I would say to the people in the Marker Felt area and up around there, come forward now and give information that you know. Because all the wee bits you know, there's like a jigsaw. All the wee bits of the puzzle, when they're put together, they will make the picture. And that's what's happening with us. We are now nearly completed a picture, which I can tell you would scare our people if they realised what actually was going on. We were being sacrificed.